What is the worst business decision you've ever seen? I used to work for a company that was bleeding money. In order to try and save money, they decided to stop honoring return slash refunds, but still advertise that they did. Whenever someone would ask for a refund, you were supposed to tell the person that it would be processed in the next 6 to 8 weeks, then get them off the phone. 6 to 8 weeks later, when they ask where their money is, you were supposed to apologize and say their paperwork got put in the wrong stack, and that it would be put in the correct stack and would then be processed in the next 6 to 8 weeks. If they complained about the length of time, you were supposed to tell them you can ask your supervisor to expedite it, and they should see it in 4 to 6 weeks instead. If they threatened legal action after months and months, you were supposed to tell them to contact the company legal department, we didn't have a company legal department, and then hang up on them, then, make a note in their account, no one should field calls from that account further, more than half the call center quit in a single week in protest of this decision, company collapsed in on itself within a few months. Property management company I used to work for had a number of student properties and high rises that were always a struggle to fill in the summer months when students went out of town. Head office came up with an offer that anyone who signed for two years got the four summer months at 50% off. Sounds like a good deal, 50% rent is much better than zero. We signed tons of students, however the lease templates that head office sent over showed the reduced rent rate on the lease rather than just adding the discount as a separate addendum. I noticed this discrepancy and reported it, and was subsequently ignored, which meant the students were signing a legal document that guaranteed them 50% rent for two years. The company lost hundreds of thousands in revenue. My late great uncle started a fish and chips restaurant. He had his own unique recipe for the fish and it was very popular. Businessmen had offered him thousands in cash for it over the years, but he always declined. After about 40 or so years, he decided to retire and hand the business over to an ambitious recent college graduate. He offered to give her the recipe and even volunteer his services for a bit while she got comfortable in her new role as owner. She declined both and within a year. She was forced to sell the restaurant after coming close to declaring bankruptcy. My great uncle died and took the recipe with him to his grave. In my hometown there was an independent fast food and homemade ice cream place, long established and run by close friends. It was a gold mine. They decided to sell and retire. New owners immediately changed everything, painted it a wild color, removed some attractions on the grounds, changed the 60-year-old menu and switched to commercially made ice cream. They lasted 8 months. I worked for a video store during the time Finding Nemo came out on DVD. The video store I worked for got a huge fish tank put inside. It was so big they had to shrink the game rental section. The tank had clown fish in it. The tank was also locked and we couldn't feed the fish or clean it. This was supposed to be done by someone who I never saw come in. So the tank ended up filled with a bunch of dead Nemos in a nasty as fuck tank. Needless to say parents were very unhappy about it. The local paper did a small article about it too which didn't help an already dying store. I have no idea what they thought an expensive as hell fish tank would do for their business. There was a Tex-Mex place I loved in Fairbanks, Alaska. The food wasn't great, but it was consistent, and the prices were fair. Well, a new owner came in, and they decided to revamp it into a fine dining steakhouse. $30 was pretty much the lowest cost you could get for an item, and this was in a neighborhood that had a substantial crime rate and was right across the street from the Bikini Barista and the Marijuana Dispensary. I stopped going, and they went under shortly thereafter. I walked in once before the place closed down, and it was dreary and empty and they had tried to bring some of the classics back to the menu, but it was far too late by then, you were too good for this world, Los Amigos. I worked for a design slash printing place for years, and the owner went from amazing idea to stupid idea on a regular basis. Don't get me wrong, guy is a brilliant designer, totally took advantage of new tech every chance he could and made it work, but, he was cheap and greedy, so, ruined what would have been lucrative long-term business relationships, so, we did this huge order of promo supplies for a fairly big online casino. Huge, for him, about a 20k order, with good margins, and the chance at long-term work with this company. While it was being picked up, on the spur of the moment, he decides to pad the bill by about 200 bucks. The guy picking it up was the son of the casino owner, and literally watched the boss do this while I stood at Tay Till. The customer looks at me, smiles, and pays the bill, with a huge wad of cash, and says I know it's not your fault, but, my family is very wealthy. We didn't get that way letting people rip us off, tell the boss over in the corner he just fucked himself out of a lot of money, because we love the work in a voice meant to carry, added to clarify who was paying, and patting me and he increased the bill over what he had quoted the job to cost. Panera Care's opening less than a mile from my college campus. For those who don't know, 
Panera Cares basically just let you order food and would list a suggested donation based on what you ordered, but ultimately it was on our system. The cashiers would just make change for you so you could put cash in the donation box. If you can't afford a meal it's fine to not pay but you are supposed to volunteer to work for two hours to cover it, but this isn't actually required. I think generally these things are supposed to be for really affluent neighborhoods where people probably donate even more than is suggested. But students from the college basically turned it into a real-life tragedy of the commons experiment. There was almost never bread available because everyone would just take it. The lines were insane and people would donate like one dollar if anything. It closed within a year lol. A friend of my husband's owns a sports bar. A few months ago he offered one dollar beers. The place quickly became overloaded with homeless people and the regulars didn't like it and stopped going. Special didn't last long. Cafe I worked for decided it wanted to fire everyone except for the leads and the manager. Then told the manager they weren't paying her salary anymore and she needed to take on more work. Assumed people would do it because they love their jobs. AT&T bought Warner Media for 80 billions in 2016 just to sell it for 40 billions now. Buy high sell low. Take a help desk that has been consistently rated extremely well by its customers for their first call resolve, attitude, and helpfulness. Outsource it to a company that's been rated towards the bottom of the list for over a decade because it costs less than the salaries slash benefits of your former in-house help desk. Then complain when your first call resolve drops through the floor and your customer satisfaction is at an all-time low. Circuit City was pretty stupid. When the recession hit, they decided to stop selling appliances and instead focus on DVDs and televisions and such. Appliances are known as being a recession-proof item. People always need refrigerators and microwaves. They don't need DVDs. They also wanted to cut down on labor costs, so they fired a lot of managers and assistant managers, and just left a lot of entry-level employees because they were cheaper to pay. Well, entry-level employees don't really know how to fully run a store, so pretty much every circuit city became dog shit. My old company was internationally known in our industry as being one of the ideal places to be. We could hire basically anybody in the world in our space to move and work in our office. It was such a fucking awesome place to work. The CEO decided to cash out when a larger company barely related to our industry decided to buy us. The new company basically gutted everything that made it great, then rushed to go public. The employee stock options were pennies and they drastically cut benefits. Every time there was a complaint the answer was maybe you don't understand our vision or well we are a public company now. They also got rid of our office which was located in one of the hottest LA neighborhoods that everybody loved. More than half of the OG senior members have left and a large number of others are rumored to leave. I was forced to start assisting in hiring and it was grueling. People would apply believing it was our old company, then find out what's up and go elsewhere. Oh, and the stock is plummeting, I hate the fact that what once was is over. Those fucks ruined something great. Financially supporting my ex going to law school. In the early days of the personal computer. A fairly prominent developer Osborne went tits up because they showed off their new model far in advance of when it was actually going to be available. So predictably dealers immediately cancelled all orders for their current computer model in preparation for the new improved version. Inventory stacked up and they were bankrupt before the new model ever came out. It's known as the Osborne effect. Company I worked for decided to stay open instead of closing at the start of COVID. The state even said they would pay employees and give businesses money if they closed and didn't lay people off. Nope they stayed open and all of their customers closed down, making no money for 5 months they had to lay off 80% of their employees. Things started picking up last October, well they were understaffed and couldn't meet demands, causing them to lose most of their big contracts. If it wasn't supplemented by the mother company in Japan they would be done for now. I worked there for 13 years. Seeing how far we grew to have one bad decision cost them everything is eye opening. There's a major ice cream place in my hometown, big building, tourist attraction sort of thing. Then the owner decided to post up an all hail Trump sign. And when I say sign, I mean a huge tarp on the front of the store that you could see across town. I live in a liberal minded town, business immediately went down the shitter. What was once a bustling store is dead empty on Saturdays. Thanks for listening. Subscribe for more daily videos.